Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Peter Kennedy, Kennedy's Garage Portal. We have a Mazda 6 sitting here again with the sky after engine inside me. What I have, I'm just gonna show you what we have, fault codes. Why is it this point in time? We're getting a, an SCVS, a Smart City Braking System uh, fault. And what it's saying is to go in and have a look at our engine. Reduced power, or forced limited power due to an engine oil over temperature, okay? So what we have is a P117A. I don't pay too much attention to the zero zeros, but that's what we have at this point in time. So we're gonna go in and try and see what the story be here. Someone has been on this car. They have actually uh, cleaned the intake manifolds and a few bits and pieces like that. But I just wanna see, I suppose I'm gonna to have to have a look. I, I, have, I have just, thought it'd be interesting, but I, I have just looked at these PIDs already. At that point then I stopped. There's a lot of lads working on these Mazdas. A lot of lads have problems with these Mazdas. So I'm only just going to shoot, do the video just purely because lads do get stuck. What I'm seeing here, if you can see that PID there, engine oil temperature, 77 degrees. It's not that high. I'm gonna have to customize these and just looking. What I'm just looking at here is I have distance since diagnostic trouble codes cleared. Whether it's right or wrong, PID, I don't know, 2.2 kilometers. So this all sounds like someone has really been in here because my garage is surely gonna be 10 miles from, 10 kilometers from anyone, wherever they may be. Um, what do I also see here? What's, what's noticeable, I suppose? What I'm looking at here as well, I can see manifold absolute pressure being 0.8. Maybe I don't need to direct on, on it right now if my only fault code at this point is my engine oil over temperature, but if someone cleared faults 2.2 kilometers ago, hey, I could have any kind of problems. I better get out and get this thing uh, a bit of a, a drive on the road. The oil change was changed 2,400 kilometers ago. Engine oil pressure 142, 130, whatever it may be, uh, KPA. I believe that's around 20 PSI. 100 KPA, I think, is one bar. Exhaust gift differential pressure. Okay, I'm just looking at the temperatures and a few stupid little things. What I've seen and I know it before, if you can see it there, my airflow numbers to be crackers on any scan tool I've got onto these Mazdas. So this snap-on is crackers. I've had the um, Mahal or Malay or whatever the hell they call it, same thing, launch, same thing. So for now, look, I'm just gonna ignore my air numbers and see. What I did do, I just had a little fast look. I pulled off, I'm sorry about the noise again. I pulled off that breather pipe there. I pulled off the oil tuner cap. Wanted to have a listen to see if the injectors were pop, 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 pop inside it, which that does happen. He has said that he's done the manifold. I got the manifold done. So if he's got the manifold done, maybe I'll have a look at a pointer. I'll get into the map sensor and just see, are the holes blocked? Usually you can see a build up of carbon in there from that map sensor as to how the intake manifold is doing. I pulled off this. I didn't have a whole lot of air coming out of the PCV valve and I don't want to be a huge amount of air coming from the oil filler cap. So I'm thinking just from what I see that my injectors are okay. This is our preliminary check, so I'm not going to go in great depth right now. Might get it out on the road, bring the scan tool with me over here and see if we get back other fault codes within a two or three minute period. I might also clear our oil or oil temperature, or oil temperature uh, fault code, and just see does that come back and monitor what the, the temperature is while driving. Before I go, I'm gonna have a little fast look and see, we do get oil dilution in these, so I'm gonna have a fast scout and see if my oil level is where it should be, above where it should be. Would diesel in this affect the temperature of the oil or what may it be, but the oil, it says it was changed 2,400 kilometers ago, but that could have been just a reset. Some lads are trigger happy on these things and we could be seen God knows what kind of story. So here, look, we we'll go and do a little preliminary checks, get it out on the road, see what I find, and then I'll, I'll clock back in again. Map sensor, lads, is stuck in here, little size 10 nut. And up she comes, right? My map sensor, I have the ball taken out of it. It just sits into the intake manifold, just above the alternator. First glances, maybe it's grubby and grimy, but 
I have seen them blocked up to the last. There were air, you'd be saying, couldn't get in through them, the nose were there at all. So maybe that's not so bad. So maybe I'm getting the truth from this sensor. Maybe we do have a little bit of an under boost issue. So what maybe I might do is I might smoke the intake manifold. One option, not two options I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do an actuation um, test via my scan tool. So bidirectionally control EGR valves and just make sure that they're open and closing. Kind of the saga goes on. First test I'm gonna do, lads, is verify that my actual sensor is actually seeing what I wanted to see. I have um, just done this already. So what I'm doing is I'm adding in, we go, when we go to one there. Somewhere around there, actually you should have had the camera turned the way. You can see that's a hundred kilo pascals. And as I said, the pipe is connected onto the map sensor. And what are we seeing here? Yes, we're seeing I had put a squirt of air in it there a second ago just to see. I am verging on 200 kPa. So my sensor is telling me the truth. So we for the drivability issue, we do or we are down on boost. So that is telling us the truth. Anyway, I go and smoke the system and then see what the story be. If there um some kind of a setup. I know there was something done on this, as in he says his original thing was he, turbo work done and the intake manifold was clean. So I don't know what they're they're after doing. But anyway, neither here there, we're gonna smoke this intake and just see what it's doing. Okay, so what I've discovered, the only thing that I can find wrong with this thing, so far, whether right or wrong, um, we are getting an under boost. He says, the customer tells me after a phone call, fall code, but this exhaust pressure sensor here is, dare I say, fitted badly. and looks cross-treaded. And I see in here where it's actually stuck together with Sikaflex. I'm gonna take that pipe off and just make sure or show you what exactly is happening to this thing. And we'll get a sensor, fingers crossed. I get to close this thing up and we'll bring the vid thing to a head. Still held, I tried to get it off without actually breaking or popping anything, but it's put together terribly, if the truth be told. Now it's fairly solid, so whatever way they stuck it, Whatever way they stuck it, it's holding there the finest. So I can hold it from here, like, and it's not gonna break. But if we look at it, it's gonna show. So I'm gonna blow on the pipe here, and you'll hear where the air is getting out here. It's broke, the stem is broken off it and stuck in the pipe whenever they were working on it. I'm calling that being a lot of a problem, or at least have to be fixed before we go any further. It's an exhaust pressure sensor, and I just believe with this exhaust pressure sensor not being right, it's going to affect our turbo and our boost and all that kind of stuff. So that's a variable that I'm not happy with. So I'm going to call that, say that we need to replace this and get a price on it. Okay, guys, this pressure sensor that's broken lives just in here, just behind the injectors, just sits down there. And the when did to change it then, what I have is I have this pipe that goes up and onto it is blocked solid with carbon after that thing broke. I tried to clean it out and I can't. The banjo bolt to get at is sitting way down here, take the battery out, take off the air box and stuff around here, not the air box, but the air box pipes. Now what I've done is there's two bits of shields or heat shields on top of the uh, turbo. A couple of bolts in them, get them out. Then there's one awkward one. There's one awkward bolt that lives down here. So we're starting at the oil filler cap and heading back in and the bolt is down here. What I done is I'm after getting uh, pry bear and I'm after forcing that piece of tin back. That piece of tin, sorry, press the button and froze it. That bit of tin is bolted on from down here again in by the turbo. I don't understand the, the design of it, but neither here or there. We have to get this pipe changed. This pipe, where is that pipe in a minute? Here. I don't know where I'm at to put in the pipe. Anyway, neither here or there. 
I've just pulled off my turbo actuator vacuum canister. I've taken a little clip on the turbo itself off. I've taken out two bolts out of it to give myself a bit of room. That bolt that was sitting in here on that, once I had this tin bent back, I was able to get in at that with a, just with a little, I used a size eight ratchet spanner and a long nose pliers holding it while turning it so I didn't drop it, which took off these pieces of tin and allowed me the room to get in at the actuator. Now I have, can't actually see that one, but there's one bolt sitting there, another one sitting here, and another one sitting over there at the top of my finger. They're gonna be awkward to get at, but once I get at them, I'd say I get at the bolt that's holding that exhaust pipe that's sitting or living in in there and blocked on me, okay? But as I said, this is slightly bent back to give me a bit of room to get in at it and hopefully I get that crack out at that point. Okay guys, I'm after getting out that uh, piece of tin. And at least we can see, oh gosh, you can see, fake me, I'm creating my own shadows here. You can see just there, top of my shadow, that's where the bolt that is holding it in right there. Okay, that's the bolt and I can see the rest of the pipe. The banjo bolt is quite hard to see. That is, you can see my finger right there. I'm coming in at it from, from where the battery and stuff is. I'm going to take out, I'm going to take out, I have done this before, I'm going to take out that, can't feel that solenoid on you that the light is shining on there, so that's a VVT solenoid, I'm taking out that, and then I'm going to try and get in at the banjo bolt, which is sitting, leaving, yeah, it's leaving just in there, if we can see, it's just there. Banjo bolt. A little bit awkward to get at, but I'm going to pull off a few connections and stuff to get into that banjo bolt. And what I'm using, and I have used before, is actually a, a Torx or a Torx is holding in the VVT solenoid. And I'm going to use a little quarter inch ratchet and swivelly head to get into the banjo bolt in order to change that. Okay? Okay, guys. Here's our pipe out on here. That is the old pipe. That is the new pipe, here is banjo bolt. Make sure that that is, I give it a clean off with a blowgun, which I have sitting just here. Make sure that, that is clean and clear, okay? There is no gauze or anything inside in it. Can't see it there rightly at this point in time, but there is no gauze inside in it, okay? Um, here's part number, if anyone wants part number. I'm just gonna show, okay? Maybe you can see this and maybe you can't. Okay, so blocked, solid inside it. Some lads might try to heat this or something to try and blow the stuff through, but just for the sake of it, I just, I don't even know how much it is, but I just changed. You no, know, if it's gonna help any lads, what I'm choosing to do is, because that copper washer is very hard to replace, I'm putting a snob of grease on it to kind of keep it stuck in there, and I'm gonna feed my pipe in from down here, with it on it, and hold it in place from up top then and try and put my ratchet on it and get the bolt started, okay? Okay, I have my temperature sensor, my VVT actuator back in, the banjo bolt tight. The one little thing I'm just gonna do before I, I have the little size eight bolt that is down underneath this tight, I'm just gonna send in. I can hear air traveling. Sorry, compressor has turned on. I can hear air traveling, so I'm happy enough that my pipe is clear. I did blow air into the block before I put back in the banjo, banjo bolt as well. So I'm happy enough that we're going back together at this point and hopefully gonna close this up soon. All the bolts are awkward and fiddly lads. So you're gonna be doing a little bit of twiggling and changing spanners and trying a little swan neck, holding bits of pliers, swapping to the little ratchet spanner. You know, it's, it's another little ratchet spanner sitting here, fiddly, but so they're all a little bit fiddly, but other than that, that's how we get in at it anyway. Yeah. We have 
One, two, three bolts back in that bit of a heat shield. The challenge there will be this one that goes in from the opposite direction. Be even hard to get a bit of tin wedge it in there. You kind of have to squeeze it easy. The challenge is going to be now to get in that, that uh, bolt in this one. I'm going to do it again while off camera. In. Okay guys, just to show, this is the revised pressure sensor you get, so there's the old one that broke, this wasn't broke by me, this is broke by someone else, but they do, they are very fragile and they can break very easy. So the revised one is this, which is steel, but it comes with, in a bag, in a box, it comes with that bracket, that bracket, two nuts, and the actual pressure sensor. Also, which I fitted in the car before I realised my pipe was blocked, they give you a little bit of a wiring loom, so that loom basically only plugs in to the connector that you had. I ran around, put a tight clip on it, and it goes over then. It's giving you the additional bit of wiring because the pressure sensor is direct up, whereas on this one, it's over at 90 degrees, so you, it's only giving you an extra bit of lint. What I'm gonna show is that the pipe comes with it as well. The pipe goes onto the sensor, the whole lot then I push onto the steel pipe that we replaced. Then this little bracket sits in there, underneath, and it just fits in. So it fits in underneath, somewhat, like that. And this piece sits up on top. It's not all taking shape or format there very well, but it fits down like that to hold it and stop it from moving around the place, okay? I'll get it into situ and show you. Guys, we have no fall codes. And I don't know if I really did. I didn't as a week or so ago since I recorded this, but um, drivability wise, I'm seeing a little increase in my power down low. So happy that this call is fixed. And if my pints and tips or hints or anything are of any use to you, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching Peter Kennedy, Kennedy's Garage. Signing out until the next cartoon, boys. Talk to you soon.